recently got to play around with the Sigma 150 to 600 mm sports lens, and it really got me thinking about that kind of focal range and how much I love using that kind of focal range. It's actually incredibly versatile, 150 to 600 mil. There's a lot you can do there. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about how this isn't just a wildlife or a sports lens. Let's get into it. It's the Taurus News Day. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and, we, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh <laughs> photography tutorial. This week we're going to be talking about the many possibilities of a 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Now, oh, I love this focal range. It definitely kind of pops out at you as a wildlife lens or a sports lens, and of course it is fantastic for that. It's such a versatile focal range, and it does make wildlife or sports really fun to shoot because you can often zoom right in, maybe on a small bird, but as it's flying or you're tracking something moving, you can be zooming out, getting a wider kind of view on things, and absolutely get multiple different kinds of photos from one lens, but it is not just about wildlife or sports at all. And in fact, there's a lot that you can do with this lens. Ultimately, what this lens lets you do, a little bit like when we've talked about 135mm lenses, even 85mm lenses, but even more so here, it really lets you hone in on a subject in your composition. Now, of course, that's fantastic for wildlife and sports, but it can also be really good for things like landscape photography, where you might want to, instead of going for a nice wide vista shot, you might want to actually hone in on one part of the landscape. That could be something in the landscape, it could be a subject there, it could be a, a nice bit of light, but it essentially helps you to focus your composition. Now, we've talked before about how a deliberate choice of having a subject, an anchor point in your photo, no matter the genre, is always going to make it a better photo. And with a lens like this, it kind of forces you to find that within your composition. And often what might be a nice wide shot with let's say a 24 millimeter lens becomes several different shots with a 150 to 600. You've got a lot of choice on how you might want to shoot it. It can help you add depth or drama to your shot since you're going to be using a little bit of lens compression. So things in the background are going to be pulled kind of closer. Mountains might seem huge. It can compress the whole scene together, which can add so much to a photo and really add that drama to things as well. But it's not just landscape either. This can work even as a portrait lens. Now, I appreciate this isn't your traditional portrait lens, but I've had a lot of fun in the past using this lens to take portraits. Now, because of that lens compression, you're gonna get a nice blurred background. Of course, you can use a, a faster aperture to get a nice shallow depth of field, but you're generally gonna get nice definition and detail actually on your subject. You can move slightly further away from your subject and get some really, really interesting portraits, really nice stuff with great isolation between your subject and the background. It also means you have some great options for how you want to compose this kind of shot. For example, you could really get further away and try and incorporate more of the scene, but because of the lens compression, you're going to be adding kind of drama and depth and it's going to be very, very interesting. Or of course, get a little bit closer and really focus on your subject. You can even use this for things like taking photos of the moon, so a little bit of astrophotography. And while you'd want a tripod to take that kind of shot, for the most part, these lenses are very hand-holdable. And because you have such a versatile focal range, you really have a lot of choice as to how far away from your subject you want to be and how you might want to compose different things. It definitely can seem like a wildlife or a sports lens. And that's because these lenses are incredibly well set up for that kind of thing. They're so versatile with the zoom range as well. It makes it much easier to track those fast moving subjects. It makes it much easier to make sure you're getting the right composition. But then that's true of all these other genres as well. There's a lot that you can do with a 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Now, obviously there's a few caveats to a lens like this. It's a lot bigger, it's gonna be heavier, it's gonna take up more room in your bag as well. So it's not an everyday lens, not the kind of lens you can just pop in your kit and leave there. But if you've been thinking about getting a lens like this or you're umming and ahhing over whether you're gonna get enough use out of something like this, just know it's definitely not wildlife and sports only. There's a lot that you can do with it. This is actually one of my favorite lenses for landscape photography, just because it really allows you to pick things out of the landscape, to focus in on some beautiful lights that you can see. So definitely a lens worth checking out, worth thinking about, 
for a lot more than you might have thought. If you have a 150-600 or if you're thinking about getting one, I'd love to know what you shoot with this kind of lens. What do you go out and photograph using this kind of focal range? Let me know down in the comments. Let me know if this is the kind of thing you've thought about before or if this is just completely new to you. I'd love to hear all of that stuff. Let's get a conversation going down there. That is super fun. I also just love reading through all of your comments. You guys have a lot of insightful stuff to say. So I really appreciate every single one of you that comments down there, of course. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. You can check out a little bit of a selection of 150 to 600 millimeter lenses down in the description as well. So you can go and see some spec of all kinds of different lenses down there. I'll see you next time. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.